on a crisp, cold day in November, four evergreen 8th graders met with two adept naturalists to talk about resilience in the Shining Rock Wilderness. So my name is Ben Prater, and I'm the Southeast Program Director for Defenders of Wildlife, based here in Asheville, North Carolina, and I manage a biodiversity conservation and wildlife um, preservation organization all across the southeastern region. My name is Jay Japadaka. I uh, run Tangle Bank Conservation, and I'm also the Director of Science for Amphibian and Reptile Conservancy, and I work in all sorts of different conservation projects in the region, including uh, some projects surrounding spruce and fir and, and uh, hellbenders and bog turtles and all sorts of fun stuff. So you can see here that the, the trees have created this nice canopy which allows the moisture to be in here and allows these mosses and, and, uh, and things to grow and it makes the, the soil nice and, and moist and soft and it's actually home to a few um, really endangered species like the spruce moss spider which is a federally listed species. The world's smallest tarantula lives in little holes in these uh, moss outcrops and there's another small salamander called the pygmy salamander that loves this kind of moist undergrowth and, and mosses. Very much affected by the decisions we make. Uh, you know JJ was talking about the forest plan earlier that will be the sort of governing document uh, that will dictate how these forests are managed for the next 20 years. Now one of the great things about this particular forest plan is it was done under a set of rules and regulations that were hard fought for to ensure that it was a collaborative and therefore a very democratic process so that a whole multitude of stakeholders and folks that have many different values for these places could come together and decide where those shared values line up literally on the map and deciding on how this place versus that place would be stewarded or managed or left alone, you name it. Northern flying squirrels also help distribute spores uh, for different fungi, which help facilitate the right type of soil mixes that allow spruce fir to regenerate and grow. So I'm sure they've played a role too. I mean, everything here is working in concert together. Uh, you know, really you want to think about these, these places as sort of a whole system and not just the pieces. So even though we talk a lot about spruce fir because they're kind of the emblematic species of this area, uh, that spruce fir represents a whole ecology of uh, all kinds of different critters uh, and plants and um, something that's pretty rare and precious in these mountains. You know, 80 years ago, this place was basically reduced to ash. And uh, what you see now is a forest making its way back, rebounding, um, and a whole ecosystem that's uh, coming back into place. In closing, we would like to thank JJ and Ben for their time, energy, and patience. We hope that you as an audience has learned as much as we did and are inspired as we are to make a bigger impact. You guys all want to be uh, biologists when you grow up? Possibly. Yeah, maybe. Do it. God, don't do it. Just do uh, postdoc research. <laughs> <laughs> forever. Yeah, just stay forever. in school forever. That's right.